Yeah, sorry about that, guys. We just had a little bit of a crash. Do you look at my skin? Does it look good? It does. Does it look shinier? It does. The mask works. I'm going to put another one on. The mask works. I bet you all you guys want to see my face. So, Dutch, let's see. Oh. We have a whole bunch of uh, we have a whole bunch of face palms and tilts. I hope you don't get tilted, Dutch. Technical tilt right now. <laughs> no, we're you back. okay? I'm I'm okay. You okay, bud? I'm okay, Do bud. Need... Okay, bud. All right, buddy. All right. Let's see. So you're playing two tournaments right now? Yeah. We're playing the uh, nice. the five k weekend warm up, and we are playing the. Uh, the five dollar show me tournament. Oh, it's a really okay. Grateful mouse. That's a really awesome emote. Burning money, Dutch. You're just burning money. Look at that emote. <laughs> I love it. It's really good. It's a little Jack Eight off suit. Getting uh, seven to one to make the call. Yeah, we'll be in there. Not really the flop we're looking for. I think it's just a check fold, right? I think it's just a check fold. Anyway, as Dribble, does that pretty much answer your uh, your your question? Hopefully, hopefully it does. I need to change the title here. We're on our fifteenth episode, guys. Fifteen fifteen episodes of uh, season two. That's not so bad. Is that right? Fifteen episodes. It seems uh, it seems a little high. I feel like we're at fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. <sighs> Shit, something just happened here. Oh, come on. Ah. No, I'm not okay. I'm having I'm having tech issues. I just magnified the whole screen and then uh, fold the top two pair and the other one just because I, like it, it timed me out. At least it's in the five dollar tournament. I'm having issues here, you guys. I'm having some tech issues here, and it's it's really frustrating when you lose poker and lose money because of of technical issues. That's really frustrating. So what happened? You just it or something? No, I, I was like going in to uh, make my uh, Google Chrome a little bit bigger. For the chat window, and then uh, it made everything bigger. And then I couldn't find the bet. Uh, it doesn't matter. <sighs> but I, I am, I am kind of tilting. <laughs> I am a little bit. I'm, I'm a little frustrated right now because stupid things keep on happening where we're folding the best hand, and it, it, that's happened twice now in this five dollar tournament. At least, at least it's the five dollar tournament that's just screwing us. Yeah, Grateful Mouse rooting for Tony Dunst tonight. That's pretty cool. The Tony is uh, is right there. Yeah, that five dollar tournament's done. That five dollar tournament. Well, it would be. It would be if we didn't just uh, turn a jack. Mozilla, good yeah. to see you in the stream, buddy. If you're here, did it start back on again, or are you back on? Yeah, we're back. Okay. This it says offline still. It'll, it'll take a second. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. We just had a little oh, bit of a crash. Do you see. look at? So no tilt here talking about that uh that that is a pretty big bubble. A thousand dollar bubble is a pretty big bubble. Hi, I was looking for you.
No. No, I'm I'm very frustrated right now. Mm-hmm. I'm very frustrated right now. We fo- we we folded the the set of sixes. That was a frustrating hand. And then uh the the tech tilt is kind of getting to me. You know what? We're just going to we're going to we're going to win this weekend warm up. Think. think positive. And yeah, spades. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're. Uh, I don't know what you're asking. Gosh, look at that. Look at that lame ass shove. Look at this, you guys. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Forty-two thousand in the middle. Okay, so he's not really betting forty-two thousand. What did you have there, pickball? Ace king. What a huge spew. What a huge spew. It just shoves 42,000. It's not really 42,000, though. Effectively, he's risking 17,000. You know, that's the, those are the effective stacks. When you have when you have the rest of your table covered, you can't really look at your stack as, uh, you know, a, a, as what it is. What is it? 140 big blinds? 145 big blinds? You can't really look at your stack as having 145 big blinds. You have to look at your stack as having 60 big blinds. You pretty much have to look at it as I have the same stack as Pepper Shot because effectively you guys are both playing the same stack. It's not really true. It's not really true. You know the the idea here is that you can you can probably take uh, you know take chances against some of the other uh, tough players that you wouldn't otherwise take. Because if he does double up Pepper Shot or does double up Spicy Wasabi, his his position in the tournament is kind of the same. Okay, let's get back to the main event. Let's get back to the uh, the, the the tournament that matters. The five k. The weekend warm up. Uh, against two people and a Jack seven two Ace Jack in our hand. Yeah, let's go ahead and fire up. Scorpio 1107, thank you very much for the welcome. <sighs> Draymond making the raise. And... We could kind of go either way here. We could shove... And we're probably going to get called. Or we could call and shove on the turn. It doesn't really matter, though. I think that... Uh, Let's just go ahead and get it in right here. And we're free rolling. So. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was a pretty unlucky, uh, run out for you, Draymond. I mean, you were never winning it. You know, it was the best. the The best situation was to, was to to split it, but uh, that doesn't happen a lot. Five percent of the time for a runner, 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 runner flush. I think five percent of the time. Yeah, that's that was pretty rough. That was pretty rough there, Draymond. I think Draymond sometimes watches the stream too. If you're here, man, just know that uh, I I I I feel kind of sick about that one. Here we are against the spewer who. Uh, somehow decided to get all of his chips in with the pocket eights against our pocket nines. Uh yeah, that 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 looks pretty good. That looks oh, pretty you good. The wrong date on there on your show, babe. No. Yeah, it says the 29th. Did you not do it? Update it? There it is. It's updated. <sighs> <laughs> so chip leader in the show me tournament take a bath. and 12 out of 45 in the uh, in the other tournament the big one the weekend warm up
Core fan getting those quads. <laughs> Okay, guys, check it out. Ace is for the win. 1300. And where are we as far as our aces cracked meter? I think that we've had, I think we're on our record 14 times without aces losing. 14 times without aces getting cracked. And uh, here we go again. Now we've got Spicy Wasabi making the three bet. What a dream situation for us. I don't think that uh i don't think it's gonna be you know what spicy wasabi i just don't think that you three bet without having something to back it up so let's just go ahead and get the rest of it in here uh yeah ace queen you know the the, the, the reason why we're pushing it in is because we figure that he's going to make the call and we don't want a, a flop to come out that's going to chill our action you'll notice that if we had just made the call we're probably not going to be able to stack him on a jack nine two board so Anytime you have aces and you're thinking about do you want to uh, do you want to slow play it or not, try to put your try to put your guy on a range and decide whether he's going to call you preflop or not. And if he's going to call you preflop, there's no point in slow playing it. Only bad things can happen. The flop can come out, you know, uh, really scary for him or really harmless and doesn't hit him. And then and then what? Now you're expecting him to see bet and and follow through with his whole stack on ace high. So. Uh, yeah, there it is. 51,000. And oh, I see you're empty. Good to see you here. He says that he uh he says he's watching the stream right now. Saying he's enjoying the stream. Let's make a uh let's make a final table together. Oh, I see you're empty. It's good to see you uh good to see you play on WSOP. I hope that uh I hope that we can make some uh, money today together. So it's 15 now, huh? 15 now. <sighs> Fifteen? Isn't that cracked? Yeah. My mind's uh, my mind's elsewhere. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not myself today. I gotta say, I'm gonna, it's gonna we're gonna play these two tournaments. We're gonna win these two tournaments, and then uh, it, it's gonna be a short stream. We're gonna just we're gonna make the. <laughs> oh man. And yeah, we're at fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen aces in a row that haven't been cracked. That is, uh, that is a pretty crazy number. Poker Mindset Coach, good to see you here. And let me see what's going on. Pat's Poker, Poker Mindset Coach, <laughs> having a little, having a little, uh, having a little spat. I was watching uh, Sam Abernathy at the final table of the Aussie Millions. No kidding. Samantha Abernathy at the final table. I didn't know. Did you know that? That's pretty cool. Good for her. I wish her, I wished her luck on her page. She plays again Sunday. You, yeah, baby. You would know if you didn't sleep in. Yeah, that's true. Well, so Samantha Abernathy, Tony Dunst, both of those guys, both of them are at the uh, final oh, table. Who's else is. is Tony Dunst? I think so. I didn't know Tony Johnson was in the final table. Good for, good for them. Yeah. Has Tony won anything? He won a yes, he did. He won a a, a WPT in the in the Caribbean mm. for like one hundred and sixty thousand. Oh, nice. I mean, he, he's definitely a guy who works on this game a lot. He uh, he watches it all the time. You know, pretty good commentary. The raw deal with Tony Dunst. If you guys have uh, never seen it, then why aren't you why aren't you guys watching WPTs? You should be watching WPTs. 
the Tony's great. <laughs> Anacon, I love that emote. Tony Dunst was uh, kind of unofficially part of the uh, Ship at Hollow Ball is, I don't know, like it, 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 that was a very loose, uh, you know, group of poker players, but. I, I would say, arguably, he was a ship at Halabala. There we are. Oh, you just couldn't wait. To I couldn't wait. That, huh? I had it ready Look at to you. go. I mean, some people have lag, you know. <laughs> you should wait a little longer. Spoiling it for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, but some people have lag, babe. So, uh, Grateful Mouse asking, how many people started the $5 attorney? Why are we even playing a $5 attorney? Because we like the format. Yeah, why are you playing $5? It's the format. It's a show me event, which, mean, which means that every winning hand is shown, which I think is kind of a cool format. So I decided oh, I, want to show I didn't know screen. that. Okay. Oh, is that why you were explaining your, um, your, your poker game, your poker invention yeah. game? Oh, do you want to explain it to the new folks that are here? No. Uh, guess, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later on. Dutch is not in the mood. I've got a, a, a pending a pending provisional patent. I can say pat, patent pending on exposed poker. Oh. <laughs> Make the fold here. Feels wrong to fold here. Castro will call for us. Oh. <laughs> wow, Great Jacks for Ace Five, kind of nit rolling him there, Caster. He's probably not nit rolling. What's probably going on is he's he's probably sitting there with uh, you know six or seven tables and, and and switching back and forth between them. And Fadi Twenty Eight, it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you, Mark. He says, uh, hey, are you going to play the $500 attorney on WSP tomorrow? Yes, I am. I am. Yes. Uh, let me let me take a look here, bony fish. Where's uh where's my whispers? I didn't get a whisper. Stars, Kid Dutch. Kid Dutch and uh, Dutch Alicious on full tilt. I don't really have a lot of results on stars because uh, I had a, uh, a lifetime ban on there from 2003 to 2014. I'm back on there now. I can play on there now. Ch chat ban. Chat ban. What could you say to somebody on Poker Stars, where they're going to give you a lifetime ban? You know, you see, uh, you see chat suspensions all the time when they're like wishing that your family dies of, uh, of cancer after a bad beat or calling you all sorts of uh, you know horrible names. Give that guy a chat suspension. Turns out, though, that if you talk about uh, if you talk about the uh, the mighty effect that the rake has on the on the sustainability of the poker economy. Then that's that's going to get you a chat. That's going to get you a lifetime ban, not a chat ban, a lifetime ban. Grateful Mouse WT WPT is more commercials than poker. That's it's kind of true. So a four five seven. We've got Pocket Kings here, horror fan. We've got uh, who else here? Kila Ruma. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and fire out a C bet. I don't really think I'm gonna slow down. 
I don't really. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can get a light call from like a, a an ace high or something. Maybe one of these guys decides to uh, take a shot at us. Here, horror fan is making a raise. I'm gonna go ahead and make the call here, and check on the turn, hoping that my kings are still ahead. Not really the greatest turn card for us, but that's okay. Um, because I'm still putting, I'm putting him not on a, a seven. I'm putting him on like a, a pocket pair. Hope that we're ahead. No, seven, seven three. Nice hand there, horror fan. It's a bullshit hand. Really, horror fan, looking down at seven three suited under the gun raise, and you're like, oh, this is this is the spot. This is a good situation. Seven three suited. I hope I hit my hand, and then you do hit your hand, and you're so far behind. You're gonna get your whole stack in there if uh, you know, no matter what comes on the turn. But you actually hit when you're five outs. That's bullshit. Bullshit. Salty. Am I salty? Yeah, yeah. Over that one, I feel pretty salty over that one. So we got Beast Reaver making the raise, and there's half of our stack in there. If we can get through, let's try it. Let's try it. Increase our stack by 50%. We've got the best hand, probably. And Horror Fan making the call. You know what, buddy? There it is. Hopefully you're making the call with 7-3 again. King, Queen. Okay, let's uh, let's dodge. Dodge and weave. Come on. Uh, okay, there we go. Dodging and weaving. 20,000. It's like, it's like the 7-3 never happened. Yeah, Flatty, I will be uh I will be playing it. The big deal. The big deal. I'll be playing it. It looks like a good tournament. Is it a rebuy and add on or no? No, this is a straight five hundred dollar buy in. That'll be uh starting tomorrow at three o'clock, guys, so uh tune in. It'll be uh, the biggest tournament we've played on here since the bracelet event. So Dutch, are they gonna do this um every week or is it every third third uh Every last, every last, every last Sunday. Every last Sunday, there's gonna have to be a five. That's pretty cool. So going for a uh, 2.5x raise. That wasn't quite 2.5x, was it? And a poker joker too, calling in the small blind. Pocket 10 starts really kind of shrinking up. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and continue here. I'm putting a poker joke or two on uh, like an ace king, ace queen type hand. I think he's gonna expect me to see bet anything, so let's let's do it. Sometimes I think that some that he's gonna have like nines or eights or smaller, and maybe he uh, check raises. Sometimes he's slow playing a bigger pocket pair. <laughs> Is that true, Grateful Mouse? He says, "Did you see Ray Bittar is looking really healthy now? Is this true?" This true. He got out of uh, doing any sort of prison time because of his uh, because of his heart condition, <laughs> and now he's just no problem. Cured. It's a miracle. It's a full tilt miracle. Let me go ahead and see here. I, I haven't uh, I haven't seen it for a while. Near death and broke was the last uh, I heard. 2014. Ray Batar. Near death and broke. Two days ago, oh, wow. Mary's apparently is quite healthy. He looks great. He looks great. He's, he looks like he got married. Do you see uh, if you if you search it within yeah, a week? Yeah, I'm beautiful. I, is that him? I, I'm looking at That's his. Not uh, him. I, this is him. I'm looking at his picture here on Card Player. Uh, this is his wedding picture, and I can tell just by looking at this picture that this guy is not broke. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
This is the uh, Ray Vitar wedding picture right there. Does this does this look like a guy who is uh, broke and dying to you? I think not. That looks like a very rich dude. That looks like a guy who squirreled away about twenty million dollars in some Cayman Islands bank account, and is uh, laughing his way to his general practitioner. Wow. Ray Vitar, an American success story. And why should he go to prison when you got no, you guys like? Ago, but he was fat. He was like overweight and he was unhealthy. Now he looks good. Why should Ray Batar have to actually go to prison when you got all the Wall Street bankers and you got all the? Uh... Wow, I'm just I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. I didn't see that. Thank you very much for uh, for for sharing graceful mouse. Yes. Oh my God! Do you see the one where he's like dipping? Uh, Look at this one, Dutch. I'm going to show you one where he's dipping down, and he. It's really sweet. It's actually a really sweet picture. Here it is. I'm going to send you the link. I'm going to whisper it to you. Look at this. Look at that, Dutch. <laughs> You see the, the the banner? I'm I'm looking right now. Yeah. Where is that? Is that uh over at? Looks like it's here in Vegas, right? Uh, I don't know. It's a really pretty picture, though. You guys want to see uh, a hand that always kind of sucks? Oh well, never mind. It was gonna be this where we have to call with Jack High, but Priest Eight 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 is uh, letting us off the hook here, so. Say in there, priest. You see that picture with him dipping here? I did. It's pretty sweet. That's a good photo. Come on, dude. <sighs> Jamie John, good to see you here in the stream. He says, hey, uh, Dutch, my girlfriend and I are moving to Vegas. Any advice on where to live? Safe, family-friendly area. Thank you. Jamie John, uh, probably the most family-friendly as far as, like, uh, uh, the schools and whatnot is probably Summerlin. I don't know that I would really recommend getting a place in Summerlin, though. I think... Uh, to live? I mean, if I was going to try to get a, if I was going to, if I was going to, like, move here and I was looking for a place to live and I would try to get somewhere a little closer to the Strip, because if you're going to live in Sum Summerlin, you might as well live in Utah. Like, what's the point? What's the point of living in Vegas if you're not, you know, if you're not 15 minutes away from, uh, from Las Vegas Boulevard? Um, I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like if if you want to buy a, a place and hope that you know hope that it, you know it's actually going to go up in value, I'd probably look downtown. A lot of those places downtown, but I, 
if, if you're raising kids and you're looking for a place where, you know that has uh, good schools, I'm, I'm not really the best person to ask, but I, I would guess Summerlin would probably be better than um, than downtown or uh, or like uh, west of the Strip. The only place that you really should you know kind of what, what steer about the clear po- of. what about the panorama? If he could, I mean, is he trying panorama to panorama for kids? Oh, for kids! I didn't yeah. see the kids part. Um, He's looking safe, Green family Valley. friendly. Green Valley is good. Green Valley is all right. Green Valley is all right. But it is far too. Yeah, Depends it's pretty you... far. Yeah. It, it feels like it's. It, it doesn't feel like it's as far away as uh, Summerlin, though. Uh yeah. I, I I mean we have friends that live in Summerlin, but I, I, I don't like Summerlin that much for myself personally. Well, I should have just called this. I was thinking about like raising, then I decided. You know what? I thought about it too long. The only places that I would say uh, you know, stay away from would be uh, like North Vegas and uh, down by the uh, university, like Maryland Parkway. Those are the only places in Vegas where I would probably and north, stay away clear. from the north. Yeah, North Vegas and uh, and down by like the university. There's a little bit of charm to the university area. I don't think it's that bad. Probably not for, uh, you know, probably not for like a, a, a family. It's not so bad. And you get into some, you can get into some, uh, some places pretty cheap in North Vegas, but it's it's a little, uh, like if you look at the crime map, it's it's a little sketchy. Mr. Bavada, good to see you. He says, Ola Dutch, finally catching your stream. Good luck tonight. Ola, Mr. Bavada. Thank you very much for uh, stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Pitaboo says, do you know what happened to MyCon now? Yes, I do. MyCon's doing fine. He just, his uh, wife just celebrated a birthday. Beach Reaver 5. Today Coming is in birthday. with Min Rays under the gun. Horror fan calling. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and squeeze here. Let's make the squeeze. If Beast Reaver wants to go ahead and get the rest of it in, I'm okay with that. Hopefully he has ace-king or ace-queen and not queens or kings. Hopefully, uh, even better yet, let's give him tens. Let's give him nines. So Pitaboo, Mycon's doing fine. Okay, ace-king, we can dodge. We can dodge, dodge and weave, dodge and weave. Come on, dodge and weave. <sighs> Tough competitor, that one. Beast Reaver is uh, one of the top players on the site. We've taken a lot of flips with him. A lot of flips with him. So he got probation. As long as he doesn't commit another felony in the next year or two, I think it's even removed from his re- his record. Mycon's fine, no jail time. He's going to uh he's working at uh, a drone shop now here in Las Vegas. He's getting into drone racing. Drone racing. I think we're talking about different tournaments. The uh the Sam Abernathy tournament, the Tony Dunn's tournament. Mm-hmm. I think we're talking about different tournaments. Yeah, no idea. I'm gonna have to look here. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's in the final table, though. For sure. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm talking about the same tournament. It just happens to be, uh, is it Sunday there? Is that why? <laughs> Did it just happen or something? Yeah, it's going on right now. Oh, because, yeah. I Ari Angle, they... Tony Dunst, that Samantha makes Abernathy, sense. Alexander Linsky, and uh, Dylan Honeyman. Duh, we're, do, we're, we're going on Vegas time, Five so we're thinking, I'm left. thinking it's tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. You know, it's, oh, it's wow. going to be, uh, it's gonna be, done it's gonna be someone that we know probably winning it. Ari, uh, Tony, and Samantha all, all, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, you know, all pretty cool people. 
Let's see where I see. Okay, I'm looking for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's so making the raise, getting called by a poker joke or two, and Happy Mon deciding to go ahead and put the squeeze on us. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, exit stage left. Let's make the fold. Texas to Nevada, good to see you, man. Talking about uh, the 215 Durango area is pretty good. That, that doesn't sound so bad. 215 Durango, maybe 215 Jones, around that area. There seems like there's some pretty good uh, developments out there. <laughs> Flatty28 says, if you come here to smoke meth, North Las Vegas is the place to be. <laughs> it's pretty much right. Pretty much right. We do so much squeezing. I just feel like Mike City knows that. But he's he's just, you know, he's doing a lot of limping here. You know I hate the limps. Let's see if we can't uh, take it post-flop here. We get through Mike City. How about you, Killaruma? Get through Killer Rima. <sighs> Hashtag swag, yo, I did. I got the resub. I gave the shout out. It, it happened at a weird uh, part. It might have happened when the uh, when the stream went down. We had a little technical problem. Hashtag, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your continued support of the stream. Thanks for sticking with us. You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be streaming if it weren't for you guys. So thank you very much for uh, for keeping the channel going. Missy the gamer, good to see you in the stream. Missy the gamer saying hi Dutch and all. Hello Exmoa, hello Cmix, hello Dan. Hello Missy the gamer, good to see you in the stream. Welcome to uh, welcome to the channels. Caster making the raise. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of his way with Ace Nine off soon. Two of the toughest players on uh, on the site right here, a caster and a poker joker too. And we're on break, guys. I'll be right back. Be right back.
And we're back. Great to see you all. Thanks for sticking through the break. Leo X Hunter asking, is the big deal tomorrow uh, combining Nevada and New Jersey, or is it just two separate tournaments? Two separate tournaments. We're not playing with New Jersey. We're just playing with all the uh, the local Vegas grinders in that $500 event. If you guys don't know what he's talking about, the World Series of Poker.com, WSOP.com, has uh, started a new tournament every month. The last Sunday of every month, instead of the $200 20K guarantee, it's going to be a $500 buy-in starting tomorrow, and it's going to be... Uh, we're, we're going to be playing it starting at 3 o'clock, so make sure to join us for that stream. It's going to be the biggest tournament we've played on here since the WSOP.com bracelet event this last, uh, this last summer. So make sure, to, uh, make sure to follow the stream, get the notifications when we go live, and we're going to be doing that at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you know, the problem with making uh, pre-flop raises in a show-me tournament is that you actually have to show them that you're uh, stealing with Jack-2 offsuit. Mm, yeah, let's go make the call here. So we have a, uh, a hand brewing in the uh, show me tournament well it's over now so I'm not going to uh, pull it up we just want a little pot is all 61,000 now in that tournament 41,000 here in the uh, in the in the one that actually matters that we can warm up and uh, Missy the gamer man I'll tell you I've, I uh, I I I feel it too honestly the uh, the the gaming community in general is is a little bit, uh, you know, you got the whole Gamergate thing going on. It's it, it, the whole community in general is is a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, a, a little bit sexist, I guess, for lack of a better word. But then you you know, with poker, where it's overwhelmingly male, it, it, it kind of takes it to even a whole other level. And uh, I, I can I can relate to uh, to what you're saying. Actually, we had a uh, we had a, a, an HBT viewing party a few months ago where uh, Lily Coletto was uh, heads up for the uh, the title. Lily is a uh, you know he's, she's a she's a poker player out of Florida. She's a boyfriend. Her boyfriend is uh, James. Uh, what's his name? Ka James C. Caldaveri or something like that, and uh, you know, very well liked. They they traveled the tournament trail. She's decent. She's decent, even though she did play a really horrible hand in a WPT 10K a few uh, a, a couple of years ago that I mentioned on the stream, where she actually misread her hand. Oh, that was what that was the worst. She misread her hand, thinking that she had the nut flush, and she didn't. She didn't. She actually just had the uh, the nut flush draw. She put it in so confidently, and then she turned it over so confident. And then she looked back, and she realized that, oh, she has nothing. She has ace high, and she freaked out of the table. But, uh, yeah, when we were e even just doing that, like, small little HBT viewing party, it, was, uh, it, was a, it got to be a little bit uncomfortable with some of the comments. And that's even with just sub-chat on. You know, I, I feel like it's, uh, it's, it, it's tough. It's tough to be a. Uh, I I can't really relate, you know. I've I've got this uh, this white male privilege that I was born with, where it's not tough for me to be a poker player because I'm staring at myself across the table, you know. I sit down and I'm against, you know, eight other versions of me, you know. I, I can't really imagine what it would be like, to uh, you know, to not have that and, and still be, uh, you know, still try to make it as a poker player.
it's pretty overwhelmingly male. I, I wish it weren't so, but it is pretty overwhelmingly male. You know, it's uh, I think somewhere around four percent of the the World Series of Poker main event field is is female. And then uh, you know, it, it it's kind of it's being anonymous. Being anonymous too makes it easy for people to be weird when they're anonymous. They just want attention. You know, when it comes to the chats and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's anonymous, and, and there's so many trolls. I was listening to a radio talk show, and he got trolls. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just an easy thing to like attack. Yeah, it's just it, it's definitely people just need to be, you know, polite. Well, you know, but it's something you can't really train people. But how are you doing on your tournament there? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Seventh out of thirty-one in the uh, in the five K chip leader in the Show Me tournament. But I can't really take credit for the chip lead in this Show Me tournament because it really just came down to uh, a guy spewing his chips with a smaller pocket pair. So here's what's messed up. Here's what's messed up about uh, poker being so uh, so much a a, a male dominated game is when people look at the results that women have had in uh, you know in tournaments in the World Series of Poker. It's it's it doesn't catch up with the numbers. You look at the World Series of Poker main event, for example, where you have four percent of the of the field being female. Um, that would suggest that, you know, every, every two and a half years, there should be a, a woman at the final table. And there's, there hasn't been, there hasn't been a, a woman at the final table since Barbara Enright, when Stewie Unger won it back in 1997, I want to say. So we're looking at 20 years, 20 years since there's been a, there's, there's since, since there's been a woman at the final table and there's never been a woman who has won the Maybe World the women are knocking event. the women out. I, I, I don't think so. I think well, what no, ends up a, happening. There's a theory though. There's a, well, uh, not in poker, but yeah, like I mean, in it, poker that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Cause, cause there's not enough women to play, but like, you know, cause women are very catty towards each other. I'm going to tell you what I think <laughs> is happening. Okay. This is what I, I believe is happening. What do you believe? Is in tournaments there is an implicit collusion that goes on. Mm -hmm. you, the, the worst thing that can happen in a tournament is for the whole table to be ganging up against you, all trying to get you out. For the whole table to turn on you, that is what you don't want to happen. This is why getting moved to a table is such a dangerous spot to be in. When you are the new guy at the table and you're looking around, because that that is a very vulnerable time for you. That is also yeah, why... some new guys, too. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Because even if you're new, it just happens that there's not many women... And they're they're so it's easy they stick out like a sore thumb. But I think so it's rare. that implicit collusion. I think that I, I think that the tables, whether they you know whether they realize it or not, end up ganging up on women at the poker table in tournaments. And this is why uh, this is why the 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 female success ratio just hasn't been there. Um, it hasn't caught up with the uh, and, with with what it should be. Because you know, having played with with you know some of the top female players in the world, you know, to to put that uh, you know that that gender qualification in front of them is is you know kind of unfair. You know, Van Vanessa Selps is not one of the top female poker players in the in the world. She's just one of the top poker players in the world. Same with uh, Lonnie Harwood, Annette Oberstad, Kathy Liebert, Jennifer Harmon. I suppose I'd put her up there. Victoria Corin, you know, Cohen, uh, great female poker players. Um, yeah, you know, so I just, I, 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 I feel like, I, I, I feel like all things being equal, something has to explain it. It's not just, you know, a lack of skill. It's not a lack of endurance or a lack of testosterone. I think it has everything to do with implicit collusion and, uh, the fact that you don't want to be seen as an outsider at the table. I think that the more... You know, poker. You know, it, it welcomes and accepts women into the into the fields. I actually think that the the success will follow, not because 
you know, the numbers will be up. I think that they'll catch up because it won't be so much of a, uh, you know, of an outsider mentality where you've got a whole table ganging up against you. Um, that's that's my that's my theory anyway. What do you guys think? What do you guys? Leave think? your comments below. Leave your comments below. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Leave your yeah, comments I, below. I, we could. I have. Uh, I don't know, man. It's like such a weird, especially ever since you started playing Rust. Now I'm just putting it out there because Dutch started playing this game, which is very, very, oh, man, very screwed freaking up. scary. It's screwed up. It's a survival game, yes. and everybody's just fucked up. Like, yeah. it is like you are amongst psychopaths. So, I mean, you have that situation, and you have that culture, and they do that to each other as men. Yeah. So you, they have a female, so what they do is they attack, because they, that's, cause that's, how they, that's how that culture talks and communicates to each other. That's how they... That, they that's how they... Like compete with each other Russ in that game. Russ is a game. screwed up game. In you're, that you're game, you're running around naked, and then you have some <laughs> guy come in and say how he's going to rape you, and then hit you in the head with a rock, <laughs> and and take your wood that you just spent the last forty five minutes oh, like yeah. trying to gather. And they just I mean, come and kill. You. It's really it's a messed crazy. up, sinister game. You but make Dutch a little house it. for yourself, and I then some guy comes it. out. He says, "Open the door, or I will kill you." And you're like. Gosh, I'm in my home, <laughs> Just man. like Dutch played for like Leave 10 minutes this morning. And these guys, were this one, these, oh, yeah. this group of kids uh, were like, a, a, a group I'm coming three, back. Uh, three raiders just walking past my house. Someone's in there. Somebody's like, in there. He has, a, he has a spear. And he's like, come out, come out. If yeah. you come out, I'm going to kill you. I mean, and you know what? Open and your that, door. But, but Open what your I'm door gonna, and everything will be fine. But what I'm trying to point out is that, I mean, we, it, we're so desensitized to the violence that it is, it's a, I mean, it is kind of freaky, but it's, we don't really take that much of a big deal on it. You know what I mean? If, if, if it were a female, such, you know what I mean? If it was a bunch of girls that did it, it'd be different. I mean, like <laughs> during the poker, like in, in, in the poker, like if we're watching like a poker stream, for example. It, it's, you know? it's funny. We got uh, Pappy Van Winkle so and Big Lebowski. Pappy Van Winkle saying, I actually like having a lady or two at the table. It makes me focus on my manners and language. That's right. You should learn manners. And usually people Big that... Big Lebowski saying, I agree 100%. See, I completely disagree. I, I agree. No, I, actually I think, feel so. like I that, think you know, guys act a little more nicer, actually. Look, I, 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 from being a, the, the, being the a female, is, I, I, you have a, I've You have a woman at the myself. table. If, if you, if you treat her just differently... Right, Dutch is a, in a, a negative way, dog. then that's sexist. You treat her differently in a positive way, that is also sexist. That's it's 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 a more positive version of it, but it's still treating them as an outsider. You don't really belong here, so I'm actually going to check my language at the table. I'm going to actually check yeah, but myself. That's, that's, but that's and not. I mean, play differently and be different. But unfortunately, a because attitude because at the table. men are and female are different, and there's the ba- and, and there's always a trying to oppress each other. Like men's are mm-hmm. men's in a in a in a, uh, you know, in the truth a, is, Michelle and I do not see eye to eye no, on some of these issues. No, not she at all. is is much, you know, much more uh, conservative in in her uh, in in her gender role models than than I than I am. But then I'm the I'm the white male in the relationship, so I always have to just kind of kind of check myself. That's and be right. Like, check your white privilege, Dutch. What, what, <laughs> Why no. why should I be arguing with my with well, my minority girlfriend? Yeah, I've dealt with <laughs> a lot of general I've dealt like, with a lot of guys. When it comes both. to shit like this. Yeah, and be, and being a dancer, I've also met two sides of the coin. Yeah. I've met guys that are just completely oblivious to like how to behave. And you know what, ladies, it's our job to put it put them in check too. You know, to say, hey, you know what? That's not the proper way to treat a lady. You know, would you talk to your mother that way? Would you talk to your sister that way? And kind of put these shoes on their foot so they can understand. Because some guys just don't understand that. And I've done that several times where I'm like, hey, dude. And I'm just you know chill. I, I'm, I'm you know, just, we're human beings. We breathe. We have feelings. That's kind of the know? point. Is that once when you when you treat women differently than you would your. And I'm talking about negative if guys. Treat me like really yeah. good though. I'm gonna encourage that. So I mean. I don't. Think I mean, am I sexist? Be, am I sexist for I wanting a guy to like, you, like? Would you treat? Give me would money. You say <laughs> that to your sister, or would you say that to your mother? I don't think that you know. Would you treat that no, woman? I'm talking about. I'm would talking you treat about the, the same way you did. But I'm yeah. talking about the low lives. I mean, this is. I mean, there's actually I feel like it, there's it different actually levels should, of the like. The question shouldn't be that at all. It should be: Would you would you treat your brother that way? You know, it's like that. That is how we should look at it. Sure. When we when we don't think in terms of gender roles at the table, well, sure. At all. I mean, I could do that as well, but you know, and, and no one, and I can understand it. You know, even like the even the harmless like 
oh you know oh she looks she looks cute no one says that when it's like you know like See, and i it, disagree with you because i've been around several women who were like damn that guy's hot so i mean is that sexist i mean we do that too girls do that just as i mean it's just okay, okay. it's How just not, pre- the it's chat not prevalent do you think is, is commenting on the appearance of tony dunst right now Tony Dunst is a good-looking guy. But how many? How much but, of the but, chat but is how many, But how many? But how many women are watching it? Probably like, like seven. I promise 8%. you, if it was a group of girls watching The Voice or watching what The Bachelor, they're saying that. So I mean, your your demographics off. I mean, the demographic, unfortunately, of poker is not equal. So it's not fifty cent percent male and fifty percent female, and they're not. And I'm sure there's girls that are going to think guys are cute and whatnot. I mean, of course. But you know, in in the in the chat, it's just so easy to attack that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just an easy attack. Okay, twelve out of twenty, twelve out of uh, twenty-five. You guys feeling pretty good about it? Yeah. And Stop being so sexist, Dutch. I'm right. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. It's a, it's a, it's just an interesting. Con- uh, uh, co- it's an interesting, interesting world. It's called Rust. It's called Rust, Flatty. Hey, you oh know what? Oh, my God. It's the worst, we're it's gonna the worst have, best game in the world. We're, we're going to gonna stream have, it. We'll stream it because it's, it's messed up. It's a messed up game. You know, the, the, the stupid thing about this game, too, is, is like it, it's like full, full on nudity. Yeah, there's penises so flying. Just like so you like running around so, and, collecting and wood with your like schlong. Because of, like, and, bloop, bloop, bloop. and I want to point out, because it's sexist, but... They don't have freaking girls. They don't have females because well, it's it, also an alpha, as yeah. well. So I mean, I don't maybe they'll have, have girls, naked but chicks in that game. I, I mean, really can you don't. imagine, guys, if there's naked girls? Guys are going to be like wanting to like be run around naked all the time. So it's like, it, it, we, and it, it all has it all has to do also with like the the, the prudish, like Beautiful. how prudy our society is. I mean, because like they freak out if they see tits. I mean, it's just so silly. You freak out when you see titties. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> my train of thought. Dutch, Dutch blushes when he sees titties. I love titties, but, you know, whatever. Oh, I guess I'm sexist for saying that. See, I think that's just our society. Our society says that it's sexist. But then violence, but then you can shoot and murder and kill people in rust and it's okay <laughs> flatty 28 man it's pretty much exactly it and they got him again <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it it's is pretty much flatty. exactly like that and they got him again rust is exactly what does that mean vulgar vulgar is that rust what I, what yeah yeah rust is exactly the Fl- equi- flatty 28 vulgar. gave us the uh the review of uh of of, of a new movie <laughs> when guy dresses like a clown <laughs> and there's, there's lots and lots of, cl- of, of of clown rape in that uh, in that in that movie, I guess. And th- yeah, that if if if, if Rust, Rust were a, were a, a movie, movie, it'd it would be, be vulgar. vulgar. Yeah, it that's for sure, Flatty. You'd probably. I don't know, man. It's a really messed up game. I can't. I I I, I actually stared at the. Um, I stared at I stared at the uh, welcome screen for like 37 minutes before I decided. I, I make Dutch play before I played, <laughs> and they have a voice. Th- they have a voice command, so you can actually talk to people, which makes it even more eerie. That's what we're you know when people say I'm going to kill you, they're actually saying it into the into the thing. Decker Seven Eleven calling it reverse implied sexism. That's a term I've never heard before. Never heard that one. I like that. I like it too. I'm not actually seeing any of it. It's a good one, though. But <laughs> reverse sexism is what it's called. Contra- sexism and reverse sexism. Yeah, I mean, there has to be a reverse, right? But whatever. <sighs> Man, horror fan, dude. <laughs> Let me show you this guy. He's horrible. He's horrible. That's the 73 suited guy, and somehow he has 40,000 in chips.
We're kind of getting hit by the uh, by the deck in this in this show me tournament. The king queen, we can make the fold there. Yeah, we're just getting hit with it. Hopefully. Wow, look at that. This is what we're kind of waiting for, right? Yeah. Wow, he just gifted his uh his stack to us. I mean, we were we were chip leader before that and he was like in second third place and now uh 135,000 in chips in this show me tournament. The, the second place in this thing is 75,000. We are we are so far ahead of the field right now. Um yeah, wow. So I think it's just time to go ahead and sit in our hands and wait for the field to kind of thin out until it gets down to about 12. Then we'll uh, we will uh, start kind of uh, kicking up the aggression again. Uh, the, the way that the, these pay jumps work, the, you know, 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th, all pay the same until you get to 9th, and then it's a $5 jump, and then an $8 jump. So it doesn't really start getting significant until, uh, you know, until you actually make the final table. Uh, so there's not really much of a point in trying to, uh, you know, trying to uh, abuse the short stacks when they don't really have anything to lose. You know, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier when we were addressing, you know, when we were talking about Asdrubal's question about um, about tournament stages, big blinds, and ICM. And you know, you look at a, a guy like Stace, ba you know, Stace B A J there. Stace B A J. It's probably how uh, how, he, how how he or she is saying that. And I. You know, if 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 you're looking at the expected value of that stack, ten thousand five hundred twenty-one, when there's uh, what six hundred thousand chips in play, so he's got uh, you know, like less than two percent of the uh, of the chips in play. What? So what are the? Oh, oh look at this. Okay, it's going to be a call here, guys, and then we're going to uh, call on the turn. If Kilaruma makes the shove, otherwise, if Kilaruma checks, I think that we fire out. Yeah, there we are. Absolutely nothing. Wow, Kilaruma just with absolutely nothing. You got to uh, you got to give him credit for trying to make a move. I think that once you get called on the flop, there you, you kind of have to start slowing down and say, well, maybe my king high is no good. Wow, so now we're second in in uh <laughs> I gotta say, I don't feel like I've been playing very good today. Okay, but sometimes sometimes this is how tournament poker goes. I mean we're chip leader here, we're second here. Chip leader with fifteen left in the show me, second with twenty one left in the warm up. I, I don't I can't really explain it because I don't really feel like we've been playing that great, honestly. In fact, I feel like we've been playing kind of crappy. Crapola, man. That's how I feel like I've been playing. Um, and yet here we are, just crushing it, just crushing it. I don't really know what to say. Making the fold there. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you guys think? Pappy Van Winkle saying any discussion where there is no 100% right or wrong is a good discussion. What do you think about what do you guys think about uh, about Daryl Fish refusing to take his his uh, final table photo with the Royal Flush Girls? And then you fast forward like four months and now Kate Hall's at the final table. Wow, we just crushed this. Kate Hall at the final table the Bellagio also making that same We're refusal. We still talking about sexist stuff? Like yeah. Okay. A little bit. I thought we were done because I was going to go do something important, but okay. I'll be the voice of reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I, you know, I wish I could find the study. There is a study where women are actually like, oh, it was about slut shaming. So I went through this thing about slut shaming, guys. And, um,. And I was like really curious to know, you know, what the slut shaming is and, you know, what's the definition of slut shaming. But um, I found this paper that actually said that women actually slut shame each other women more than like a man would slut shame a woman. So I guess the premise is that men shouldn't slut shame a woman or not date a woman because of slut, you know, because of, of their previous, you know, uh, adventures. But there is such a thing as preference, meaning that if, if a girl has slept with a lot of with men, it's 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 your right to have a, a preference of not being with that woman, and that is not considered slept. So I found out all this stuff. I wish I could. I'll find the article about it. It's pretty uh, interesting. And I gotta say, anyways, it, hi Nalzi. I see that you're in the chat. <laughs> you came during yeah, a very we'll, we'll change very the heated Nalzi, it's good to see you, man. Yeah. Great to see you here in the stream. Ten months. Nice. We love Ten you, months. man. Oh, Nalzi, yay. thank you so much. And uh, if you guys, if you guys want to check out a really good streamer. A guy who who knows what to do. He did a Bob Ross one, dude, and I missed it, so I got to see the replay. You got to watch Niles. He's so good. Yes, we we're very lazy. We're we're talking about Rust earlier and how. Oh, Niles Niles has played that game, right? Has he played? He has it in his library. I don't know if he's played. I, I, I'm I would, sure he has. I would love to watch Niles. Oh gosh, Rust. he might not like. I it. would love to see the that. The community is very very. Uh, Niles, is, it, is there Niles a Rust community? Niles is like community? the opposite of the Rust community. Yeah, but is there a Rust community that's like Rust friendly like and so sweet and like, hey guys, bad. Let, me, let me make you a pair of pants. Let me make you a pair of pants. Hey, <laughs> let's, go, let's go plant some pumpkins. I mean, is, is there a nice, is there a nice server out there? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think there is. But yeah, there was a whole thing. Let me see if I can find that article. Okay, we're going to uh, adjust our uh, post flop C bet just a little bit. Say, you know what? Instead of the 4100 Sestra, we're going to go ahead and make it a uh, half pot. Uh, okay, making the check. Is it a good river card? I mean, is that the river card we're looking for? If, if Sestra checks to us, I think it is. Sestra checking makes me feel like it's probably the river card we want. Sester check raising isn't what we want to see though. <laughs> Pappy Van Winkle says Dutch and Varconi mode. That's pretty much right. That's pretty much right. I'm looking around feeling like how am I doing well in these? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Randy for say, great to see you. And yes, grateful mouse. Uh, those shirts, I still haven't gotten mine. They're on their way here. And if you won one in the, uh, if you want a shirt or two or, th or three, like Linda, Linda 1973, taking three of those shirts down, amazing. Uh, just know that they are on their way soon. Let's go ahead and make the raise here in the, uh, the 5K. I'm kind of tired of Mike City just open limping, open limping. VK1048, if you shove, I'm going to call. He's thinking about it. He knows he knows that it's probably a move. His spidey senses are right, uh, but then it's like even if even if you you know it's a move, the the problem is you start losing fold equity when the pot gets that big. You know if he made the shove, I would have I would have been priced in. So, do you really want to put your whole stack at risk with a hand like Queen Ten offsuit? You know Ace Eight suited, probably not. Probably not. So yeah, Bony Fish, uh, you are one of these guys who have won a t-shirt. The, the, the ones who have won a shirt, they're going through me. I have to send them all out, and I still yeah, haven't gotten be the a package. While. As soon as I am wearing a fist bump shirt, you're going to know that yours is in the mail. Yeah, we're going to send it right away. Uh, but I have a feeling that like the, 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 the winners are, are getting their, their free shirt. 
slower than the uh, than the uh, than the non-winners, the people who are actually buying their shirts. We're all winners. If you're wearing a fist bump shirt, you're a winner. What do we do here against Y Try? What do we do here? You know, Y Try has been coming over the top of us quite a bit. And I've got I've got an ace nine off suit. Oh well now we can fold. Now we don't have to worry about it. So it would have been the right call against Y Try. It would have been the wrong call against Turn the Nuts. Turn the nuts, uh, rivering Y try. So Y try is kind of doomed there, no matter what. If turn the nuts folds, I think I'm probably going to make the call just because Y try has been uh, three betting so much that it, it's just like okay, his 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 tendencies are off. He's uh, he's showing me that he's, he's he's doing it pretty wide, and I'm not saying that he has like a, you know a complete you know butt kiss there. I, I think that he has a legitimate hand, but. You know, even even when you're looking at like top twenty percent range, Ace Nine is just not going to be that bad. Okay, gosh, against one of the top guys on the site. So, guys, I feel like we're going to be juggling final tables here. That's what I think is going to happen tonight. That's what I think is going to happen tonight. What? Look at, look at, we are just, we are just varconing the shit out of these tournaments. Look at Caster. I mean, he's not going to know what hit him. We're firing out that C-bet with uh, any two cards, 3,300, but we, uh, we crushed this flop. We crushed it. See, Rust is an old game, according to Nalzi. It was super popular two years ago, so, yeah. All that's left are the garbage. Oh wow! Oh, got hit with a huge hack wave, <laughs> and everybody started playing. I didn't know. Oh wow! I, every time I'm on there, I, I see a couple of people getting uh, getting banned for uh, for the anti cheating kicking in. Huh? Well, all I know is this: we just we played it on we just it was in our library, <laughs> and we just started it. So he doesn't know anyone. Meh. Yeah, it is meh. It's scary, and I don't even know why Dutch Watt likes to play it. I don't know why either. Because he wants to get back at all the, I, the I people wanna get, I, I want to. He has uh, a list of the names. I want to turn my little <laughs> stupid rock, hitting it against a tree. I want to. I want to go from there to actually having body armor and, and an AK-47, and uh, and and fighting back against the looters who are coming in and and giving it to me, giving me the time. I don't like it. I don't like it. See, this is the thing about Rust, right? You, you see some random stranger, and you both are sitting here with, like, a spear. And how I've been playing the game is I don't, I don't just auto-kill people on sight. It's not like I'm like, oh, oh. But then a lot of people are. A lot of people are, they see you, and they're going to, they're going to kill you for the stone in your pockets and, and, and the wood that you've been collecting. And it just feels wrong. It feels wrong. It feels immoral. <laughs> you know, it's so stupid, but it feels immoral. It's like Nilesy uh, actually uh, Nilesy hooked me up with a with a pretty fun game, Elite Dangerous, that I've been playing. And for the first like for the first week or so that I was playing that game, I was like, oh wow, you can make a lot of money trading Imperial slaves and uh, and and narcotics between uh, you know between you know, Jera and Tarir systems. And I was like, okay, I can make a lot of money doing this. And, and after after about like twenty hours, and after I like got got into my Cobra, you know, and I was like, I, I realize this is a game, <laughs> but I don't feel right about trading Imperial slaves anymore. I think that I'm going to just yes. stick with like medical equipment and mining equipment. And now I don't do Imperial slaves. I don't I don't traffic narcotics it's in this game, even though game. I could make like three times as much. I was like, this isn't me. <laughs> This isn't me. There's something immoral, even though it's like a simulation. It's like it, it, it's it's weird too that the game itself would would reward slave traders and drug runners in the game. It's like okay, so if if you want to make the most money in the game, that's how you do it: is you 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 smuggle in drugs and slaves. 
there's a little there, there's something there's something a little a little depressing that that is uh, that's the biggest way to make money in that game. And it, it, yeah, and sex trade is actually a really big. De- it's a big problem. Still a problem. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we were driving so. down the I-15 a couple of years ago, and there's a big billboard. Well, it's not only. On the side yeah, of I want to point out that it's not only women that deal in the sex trade. It's young men, t- young boys too. The billboard said they dealt in it. Sex trade Human never, trafficking is never. It's never, never okay. okay. Why do I need a billboard to tell me that? I mean, uh, there are actually people. Uh, it's because it's an issue. It's because there are people who think it's okay. It's because they're like, well, sometimes it's okay. It's it's okay in certain. Well, situations. you know, um, there's a there's a um documentary on Netflix called The Playground. It's really sad, and um, it's about the uh sex trafficking of a young. Uh, young children in like uh, like Thailand and things like the Philippines, Thailand and things like that. And people in their mind think that they're helping the uh, society out. Helping F-Link. them by giving them money. You're talking about the, the book? The course? I've heard some great things about that book uh, Big Lebowski, The Course by Ed Miller. You're, you're the third person I've heard really suggest that that, that, that is a uh, a must-read book, um, and I, I looked in. You know, I'm I'm kind of uh, going back and forth about hmm, keeping up with chat. I'm not sure. F Link said that he didn't like it. I'm not sure if he's talking about the book or something else. Oh, I guess not. Uh, my wee wee is green. Saying, is it possible to stream t- Twitch with zero delay? Um, I don't know, but uh, Anaconda says there's not anymore. So yeah, there's 15 seconds of delay. So I don't know. There used to be a way to do it's it for free. Pretty close. It's pretty close to straight live if you don't have it, if you don't turn on the delay from your broadcaster. Pretty close. I read that. I, I read that differently than you wrote it, Flighty Twenty Eight. Um, I, I read, he said, man, there was this one guy on, on uh, Call of Duty Black Ops that would make you lag when he saw you for like two seconds, and then you, when you froze and he'd kill you. I actually thought that you said he would make you laugh when he saw you, <laughs> so, <laughs> and then he would kill you when you were, were uh, en- enthralled in the humor. He's like, oh, that's, that's kind of a clever strategy. That's kind of, uh, that's, that's kind of positive. <laughs> but uh, making someone lag, that's lame. That's pretty lame. What's the other one? There's OBS and there's what else? Which one is the open oh, source one? Oh, F-Link wasn't talking about the course. He was talking about the Ace-9. Oh. Well, F-Link, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't have to make the decision. I'm probably, I, I don't know that I'm calling there. You know, it, it, we can be results-oriented and say, well, he had eight, so it's, a, it's, a, it's the right call against whatever range he's coming with. He was just, he was three-betting so wide. So it was kind of, uh, I don't know. So Nilesy, you know, I I've told you about good Ark. things about Ark. People, uh, M- Michelle was talking about Ark and saying it was great because the dinosaurs, because the said, dinosaurs, and you can be a chick. It's weird because the the dinosaurs actually kind of, kind of turned uh, you off, turned me off from really. From Ark. It's really fun. I played it ever with my niece, and I was like, "This is so cool! I built a house. Look, Aubrey, I built a house. That's my niece's name." And then I built a little. I built a little. <laughs> it took me ten hours <laughs> to figure it out, but I built a little <laughs> shack. And I was very proud of it, and I and it's the whole uh, you, the sleeping bag concept thing as well, and you know it wasn't so bad, but I also played on by myself. <laughs> I didn't go. I wasn't like going live because I'm I'm afraid that people try to kill me. 
I just don't like that first kill. But once I get it, once it gets it's done and over with, then I'm fine with it. Hashtag swag says you should start a new stream called Noble Gamer, Noble Gamer. and try to beat the games without killing or hurting <laughs> anybody. I think that's a good There's idea. There's just some games that's going to be impossible to do, right? I mean, a lot of games you're just not going to be able to uh, go, you know, go all uh, Buddhist on it and and get to the end. Maybe. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, in the dinosaur in an arc Dutch, you can also like ride the dinosaurs and like fly. You can fly the dinosaurs as well. Okay, thanks, Nalzi. I will check that out. I like that stuff. So that's really cool. He recommended a documentary called "The Great Happiness Space." The Great Happiness Space. <laughs> what are you What are you giggling uh, about whoa, there? Did nothing. you make some really good good I'm, a good I'm hand? Just laughing, uh, laughing, uh, and and some of the chat. What are you laughing at chat for? What's what's the funny thing about chat? Uh, all your YouTube people want to know. What's what are you giggling about? Nothing. Oh, see, it's not that. Nothing. It's that, it's that funny, guys. Flatty, flatty, it's, flatty <laughs> twenty-eighty has a way. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do we do here? It's gonna be a call, right? Ace Queen off suit. Sestra deciding to uh, get it in there. You know, I don't know. We can make the fold here. It's not that bad of a fold. We can uh, rely on Brad J to go ahead and make the call for us. So he's never getting through. So I guess maybe it was, uh, maybe we should have called. Maybe we should have called there. It felt like uh, best case scenario for us was he was going to be showing that kind of hand. He's just never coming in with like a, he's never shoving there with like an ace jack, ace ten. Um. Zombie Brains wants to know what's up, D Moneys. I like that. That's your new name now, D Moneys. Hey, D Moneys. D Moneys. That's your D Money. That's your new name. I've got a new nickname, huh? Cool. Thank you, Zombie Brains. I will take a. I will take a new nickname. Yeah, you, we should try Arc Dutch. I told you it was really cool, and then we could like. And I played it on a really crappy oh. computer, so. Guys, by the way. What happened? Did you get the end? We're at a final plan? table. No, you are not. We are. We're impossible. At the final Today's table. been a crap day. Are you sure? I'm sure. I don't believe it. And uh, you know what that means is we're gonna go ahead and turn the uh, the, the chat off. It's gonna be subscriber chat only for the next uh, little while. Well, for the rest of the stream, really, until we're done. Uh, and then because Dutch will be playing Rust again because he's, he's convinced that he will conquer the world. Yeah. Well, I, I wanna I wanna get to like the mid game. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm tired of... I, I, the the game is not just pants. about running around naked. That's all he wants. That's with just a, what, with a rock. He just wants pants. I, I just want pants. That's, <laughs> That's what I want. Lot. I just want pants. Maybe we should try art. We should, we should... You know what? We should stream it if we're going to do Rust because it's so horrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But we'll do it on my channel or so you, you don't mesh, me, mix up your channel and my channel. I mean, so we don't... We so don't going for a game. thin value bet where maybe we get called with sixes or nines. That's the uh, that's the plan there. Maybe we can even get maybe we can even get hero called with an ace high if he's got like if he can put us on like a, a busted straight draw. You know that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, 
I think you think the penny auction business is horrible, right? I do hashtag swag yeah, you. Horrible. I think that it's immoral. I think it's immoral. That's the one where you. So a penny auction is where you um, bet a penny, and you have to pay that penny, and somebody bets two pennies, and they have to pay the two pennies, so they keep the three pennies, and then you keep on betting, right? Or you keep it, on it, it basically it preys on on people who believe the advertising when you say win an iPad for seven dollars. Yeah. You know, it, it's. I, 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 it, it doesn't feel right to me. Okay, so. And then, um, like, let's say I win the. Uh, well, let's say I win the iPad for ten dollars. What does that mean if I if I already put five other auctions? That means I have to pay all those auctions, right? It's yeah. It's basically the idea behind these these penny auctions is that it's a. Uh, uh, you 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 pay regardless whether you win or you lose. So you you put in a bid. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be paying that bid, whether whether it's the winning bid or not. Uh, yeah, they shouldn't be legal. It, it, it preys sure. on, it, it, it on a, a pretty powerful uh, cognitive bias, uh, which I believe is is sunk cost fallacy. Is I, I think what uh, like if you were going to condiment it up, uh, you know, if you were going to. And try to uh, peg it into one of the the cognitive biases that, that Tversky and Kahneman talk about in their uh, in their behavioral economics uh, you know, studies. I, I feel like it would probably be closest to sunk cost uh, fallacy. But there's there's there's, a, there's been a lot of academic studies and a lot of uh, you know little. Uh, it, it, it's kind of one of those things in in like a in a behavioral economics class. They'll they'll have you know kind of uh, little toy games. Where making the fifty seven hundred here again? We're just getting run over, just run over with the deck. Where uh, they'll have like a fifty dollar bottle of wine, and they'll have that. They'll have it so that the and you know, they'll say this 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 bottle of wine costs fifty dollars. It's a fifty dollar bottle of wine. Let's make the fold here. What is he? What is he doing it with? Aces. Wow, we got a, we got away from that one. It's a fifty-dollar bottle of wine, and how we're going to do it? We're going to auction it off, but whoever comes in second in the auction also has to pay, even though they don't win the bottle. And they watch what happens, and what ends up happening is that the uh, bottle of wine gets sold for way more than fifty dollars, and you get, it gets down to two people, and then one person's like, "Okay, well, I'll, I'll bid fifty dollars," and then someone's like, uh, Fifty-five dollars. Now they're overpaying for the wine, and the other person isn't going to get anything. So what is he supposed to do? Is he going to like? So they keep on bidding back and forth and back and forth because they want the wine so freaking bad. It's not that they're doing <laughs> anything wrong. This is just the human nature, and it's over. They don't want to leave that. They don't want to be asked out. For this sure. This is like you know we are we are instinctual animals, and there's something wrong with our circuitry where we fall for these kind of scams. And we know that we fall for these kind of scams. But the the, the, the screwed up thing is knowing that you fall for them doesn't help you not fall for them. You know you you still fall for them. So I I don't know penny auctions just feel to me like it's, it's predatory and and I don't like them. I I would not recommend anybody. You know, participate in them, and I certainly wouldn't recommend anybody um, you know, start their own penny auction site because I feel like it's uh, I, I feel like Immoral. it's a I feel like it's a lousy way to make money. Basically, it's a predatory way to make a money. A sucker's born every minute. And and this is coming from a guy who plays poker for a living. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whose whose uh, entire livelihood depends on people coming at the table without much of a shot. Wow, just. Crushing, just getting hit with the deck and hit with the deck. Cry June, thank you very much. We got Jin Joy saying, "Take it home, Dutch." Thank you very much, Jin Joy. Notch of the Bandit, Scorpio. Is this the right? What, 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 can you change the final table uh, payouts there? Okay, yes, I can. Yes, thank I can. you, Dan. Because we are still thank in this you, weekend warm up, which is the biggest tournament of the night. It's like the third biggest tournament of the whole week. But uh, this one. Well, making the call, queens against nines. Do they hold? Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to miss. It's kind of it, it, you know, the, the way that we're running is just it's too good. We're running too good for that to ever miss. This is the payouts here. It's a small tournament, guys. It's a five dollar tournament. You know, the only reason we played this tournament was because it was a a cool concept that we like. This show, you know, show me tournament. It's a show me tournament. Um, you know what I'm gonna do too, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and actually tweet. I'm gonna go to the Twitterverse. If you guys aren't following the uh, the uh, if you want, if you aren't following Twitter, 
Yeah, bony fish would know about the auctions because bony fish actually does real auctions. Bony fish is a uh, he's a real auctioneer. Yeah, he's a real auctioneer. So yeah, that's right. So yeah. bony fish, tell us how it is. So there's all sorts of you know there, there's all sorts of uh, yeah auctions are awesome. You you get into this. You get into this mode where you go you go to an auction thinking you're going to get a good deal, and then it, it starts feeling personal, and it's like, well, he's not going to take that away from me. I can one up it, but the you know, it, it does seem more honest, even though there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of hyping and uh, a little bit of uh, you know gamesmanship and gameplay that comes along when you're doing a normal auction too. Hmm. What do you guys think of this? We've got Jack Ten suited. I'm, just, I'm really oh well. And BK Ten Forty Eight making the shove. Um, and we're getting almost one and a half to one. So I think that we're gonna have to call here and hope that BK Ten Forty Eight is showing up with like an ace rag or a smaller pocket pair. Queen Eight. Yeah, we can we can we can live with that. Not the greatest flop for us. Hit. No. So his Queen Eight holds up against the Jack Ten suited. You know. It kind of sucks losing the hand, but if we're going to replay it and we know exactly what he's got, then we made the right move. And I think against his range, the uh, Jack 10 suited is just fine to make the call. Seattle Pro, six months in a row. Seattle Pro, thank you very much, man. Spasiba. Spasiba, my friend. It's good to, uh, good to have you here on the stream. Let's get back to the final table. And I want to get to the Twitterverse and let people know that we are uh, we are kind of dominating this this show me tournament. Well, Pris Prisoner's Dilemma is just uh, you know, kind of the classic game theory uh, game, basically. You know, it, it's, a, it's a game. The idea being uh, you've got two pri prisoners, one in one room, one in the other, and uh, the, if, if both of the prisoners turn on each other, then it's a bad result. They each end up doing, you know, 10 years in prison. If one of them turn on each other and the other one doesn't, then the one does, like, two years in prison and the other one does 20. And if they both keep their mouths shut, then they both do five years in prison. So then the question is, what do you do? And the, the problem is, with the prisoner's dilemma, that you look at it and you're thinking, well... Uh, if you're going to maximize your own personal expected value in this situation, since it's just a one-off situation, you should always rat out your buddy. That's that, that's the problem. But then it ends. You know, if 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 you you know if if you play rationally, and then your, your opponent is also playing rationally, then you both end up doing 20 years together. You know, Yay. so that's not a good result. It, it's very tough. You know, game theory. Game theory is is a weird thing where uh, yeah, there was there was a weird. Uh, there was a weird show that Liv Boire was on a couple of years ago. It was uh, that was a good that was a good match. It was a, it's it's the ball one, right? Yeah, it's, where it was is, like this. It's a European really, game show. Let me let me think about what it, like it, the golden it, it, balls. <laughs> yeah, it was like called the golden balls. Is based. Let me see if I can't find the uh, Liv Boire game, game show. show. That's probably the best. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if a lot of people have seen that. And everybody watched that and was like, oh, well, Liv Boire, she's just playing the game as it's meant to be played. You're always supposed to defect. You're always supposed to uh, uh, share or steal. Split or steal is what it's Split called. Split or steal. Let's go ahead and watch it. Let's go ahead and watch it. Let me see if we can But it's it. And it's an, interesting, um, it's an interesting thought experiment, right? I mean, what do you do here? You, before, before what happens... Did we tell everybody what happens, or you kind of did? I'm we could gonna, have them we're guess. We're just going to watch. We can have them guess what the proper thing to do is. I, 
But I don't know why we didn't see bet here because we're trying to queue up a YouTube video. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why we didn't see bet here. <laughs> And that's why. We're, we're not trying to outplay you, Turn the Nuts. We're just trying to queue up a YouTube video. Oh, um, Adam Vogel's in here. Or Adam B's here, too, by the way. Did you say hi to Adam yet? Or you did? Or you didn't? Um, I, I, I didn't say hi to you yet, Adam. If you're on the grind tonight, I wish you the best of luck. Let me see if you're in this uh, weekend warm-up with us or anything else. Uh, Adam V, a good, uh, you know, a, a good, uh, good friend of the stream. And always making it pretty deep playing from northern nevada right here on wsp.com oh but you got your uh, you got your username changed so i can't remember now what it was hey guys we're on break i'm gonna go ahead and get a little uh, refill on the coffee and while we're gone i'm gonna play this yeah, uh, Liv Boré split or steal video we can talk a little bit about game theory when we get back because it seems to me like there's a, there's a, a, a problem here there's a problem here when you when you start thinking about what the right play is split four you will if you both choose to split four you will split the six thousand five hundred pounds and fifty P and go home with three thousand two hundred and fifty pounds and twenty five P each if one of you chooses steel one of you chooses split whoever chooses the steel ball will go home with all the six thousand five hundred pounds and fifty P whoever chooses the split ball will go home with nothing if you are both greedy piggy wiggies and you both choose the steel ball you go home with nothing today will be a waste of time do you understand yes okay what i want you to do now is to check each ball that you have to make sure you know which one is split and which one is steel be very careful that you don't show anybody very carefully I'm going to give you a little time now to discuss what you're about to do. It's a split. I, w I wouldn't be here unless we've done the integrity thing. I had that run of killers and we've come good. And it's a split. Simple as that. Split, split and split. Job split. done. I've got nothing else to say. I've got nothing else yeah. to say. I'm, I'm dead chuffed. Go on, yeah. I yeah, actually absolutely. really like it's you. I like you nice. too. It's a fantastic night. And I, I, I can't believe that we've actually come good. So. I think we've worked it out. We could have been done in on steel. Please don't let me I'm down. I'm not going to. Please. I've got my wife up there. I've got all my all the kids watching. I'm going split. Simple as that. So that's it. Split. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a simple choice, but a hard one. Okay, Liv, Stuart, choose either split or steel now. And just hold it up. Okay. Split or steel. You have just stolen six thousand five hundred pounds and fifty p. Stuart, you go home with nothing. I've been Jasper Carrot, and this has been Golden Balls. Until next time, goodbye. When I saw that steel ball coming, I, I was surprised. I mean, she's a, she's obviously a very manipulative and very intelligent woman in terms of she totally convinced me. I took her at her word, and I said I will. I'll split, and I would have felt a lesser man if I had if I had stolen that money from her. We are going to take over the bowling room. And obviously, they're not as important for many other people. The only way to make money in this game is to steal. That was part of my strategy from the start. When I saw Stuart reveal that split ball, I was just like, yes, six and a half grand. Yes. Six and a half grand. I know you're the lap. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, split or steal, what do you do? It's, uh, it's uh... Zombie Brains, man. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the stream and being here. The newest sub, welcome to the crew. Zombie Brains. Besides uh, the cool emoticons, which I hope that you enjoy. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Let's get back to this. Oh my gosh, we've got him again. We've got the aces in the in the weekend warm-up. We've got him. We've got him. 
Where is it? Where is it? There we are. What a uh, what a great hand to have at a great spot too. Seven out of twelve players left. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this hand, guys. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper. Hopefully he defends. Sergeant Pepper is one of the top players on the site. I think that he's going to defend, getting two to one. He knows that we're uh, doing this pretty wide open. Jack four five shouldn't change anything. And uh, what do you think, Sergeant Pepper? You think that maybe uh, maybe you could have defended with a jack? That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. You know that you're gonna. You know that we're gonna see bet. So let's not uh, change this around. And maybe Sergeant Pepper decides that this is a polarizing flop, and he can go for a check raise. Maybe he actually has uh, a legit hand, and he's going to go for a check raise. He's going to check raises. He's too good. He's too good. Don't forget to talk about the game theory. I won't. Okay. We've, got, we've, got some, we've got some topics. How do you know, Sergeant Pepper? How do you know? You smell it. You, you, you knew it. You knew it. <laughs> One of the funniest things I remember uh, another poker player doing. We were at a uh, we were at a party over at uh, uh, Frank Casella's place, and uh, he has a little uh, game room in the back. A couple of the guys were playing uh, some some poker back there, and Brandon Cantu walks in. He goes, he, he looks around. He goes, I knew I smelled a poker game. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought that was one of the funniest things. Okay, so let's get back to our final table and let's talk a little bit about game theory because uh, a lot of people uh, had some things to say about that uh, that Splitter Steel show. A lot of people were like, "Look, if you if you watch the show, it's it's the it's the game theory optimal move. You know, the decision is is being made. If if they if they split and you split, then you get half the prize pool. If they you know steal and you split, you get nothing." If they, you know, so if they steal, you're going to not, you're, you're going to get nothing no matter what. You know, if, if they steal, you don't get anything. Okay. Um, and if, so if, if they choose to split, then you're looking at getting everything or half of it. Everything or half of it. So what do you do? You know, what do you do? And do you really want to reward their steal by, by giving them the split? Then, you know, on, on its face, it would seem like, yes, you know, the uh, you know, Liv Boire is correct that it would be the 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 right rational behavior move to always pick steel. The problem is when the right rational move results in a a huge net loss when everybody's rational. How can you say that's the right move at that point? You know if if, if, if you know that that game would just quickly become. Uh, you know, a big finale of watching two people trying to convince each other that they're not going to steal the whole prize and walking away with nothing. And that would be every single game would be that way. Uh, there, there's more to it than that. There's got to be more to it than that because I can't, I, I just don't believe that game theory would right. suggest that the right move is for everybody to walk away with nothing. That doesn't seem like uh, that's the right move at all. But uh, Liv, Liv, Liv Boire defends it. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I think I'm going to make the fold here against He Right 1787. You guys can't see it's the other, the other tournament. Let me find uh, the video of her talking about game theory. And a couple of people actually came to her defense because she got a little bit of criticism. Because the guy was so heartbroken. The guy looked the guy so looked wrecked. Hurt. Right? He could. See, look, this is what's wrong it. with this. We're la I'm laughing yeah. <laughs> and I'm laughing at him. The guy looked wrecked. looked wrecked. You know oh what he looked like? Oh my gosh, like? I, I, I'm wrong. Like it's so hard. This, this, his this, heart broke. This was he He's, looked heartbroken. Like his he heart got like ripped out of him. This was a microcosm. This was symbolic of every relationship are you, he's yeah, ever had. Yeah, are you still, had you're in the still f in the fifty, right? Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Pat's poker. Still yes, it. sorry. It, 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 he did look like he was a little bit. He looked betrayed, you know. And it, it's, it's sad. Yeah, Scorpio, friend yeah, or foe, basically the same. Yeah, but to show. think that it's funny, though. What I'm saying. Let me find uh, the live war a. Uh, split or steal. She explains it, right? She talks about it. Let me see if I can't find it. Who got paid? Who get paid on that? that? Who get a paid? 
Brutable. I, I bet brutable is meaning you. maybe he means the uh, the the, the uh, video, the YouTube. So uh, Liv Bore won that, right? Yeah, Liv Bore won. Paid. She got paid. She's she the one who got paid. She got paid like an arc. She oh, that's played. She got played. He got played like an arcade. <laughs> he got played like an arcade. She got paid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, bet in half pot and to turn the nuts. Hopefully he's not slow playing aces. <laughs> Is that? I mean, I don't know. Kim going back to my Our step. good run continues. So Randiferous 8, we're playing two tournaments right now. We're playing this one where we're 8 out of 12, and we're playing this one where we're 1 out of 7. I feel like we are going to be... Uh... Oh, man. We're at 16 now with these aces cracked, huh? That's pretty good. 16 just now? Because, uh, what's his name? Just, just spoiled it. I just I just changed it. Live or is it seventeen now? Is it seventeen? It's sixteen now. Sixteen. Okay. We are gonna like take over the phone room. We got Dr. Barilla. Welcome to the uh, the crew. Six months in a row. Six months. Dr. Barilla, thanks so much for supporting the stream. That reminds me, uh, you know, for everybody who's uh, Wow, that's a pretty good flop, really, for King Six. Let's fire out the half pot size bet and see if we can't just get through. Uh, for everybody who's subscribed, if you haven't gotten the welcome email, if you haven't gotten the uh, the link to the Google Forms for these fist bump patches, right? I should probably put one of these on. Going to keep away the bad beat, uh, the bad beat monster. Just put it right there. Brand new, brand spanking new patch right there on this shirt. Um, if you guys haven't gotten your patches and you haven't gotten, uh, actually all the pat all the patches were caught up. When did we send those out? I think, uh, Thursday night or Wednesday night, we were caught up with the, pa with the fist bump. So if you, with the fist bump patches, so if you've, if you, uh, if you just subscribed to the stream in the last month and you haven't gotten them yet, we'll just give it another week. But if you, if you haven't gotten them, then make sure to f make sure to uh, hit me up Dutch at dutchboy.com or or hit up Xmoa. We'll resend the uh, the welcome email. A couple of a couple of them have been returned. Hmm. And when they are, I haven't really been that vigilant as far as uh, going out and tracking down uh, you know the right address. I'm just like, okay, well if they got their address wrong, I'm not worrying about it, but that's the wrong way to that's the wrong way to to approach it. I really need to be a little bit more diligent, in making sure that the people who got their address wrong or for whatever reason didn't, uh, you know, for whatever reason some of them have gotten returned. I should I should be better. I should do better. You guys you guys deserve better. But zombie brains, you're gonna get uh, fist bump patches if you want them. You also get a, a digital download link of my book, Poker Tilt. So thank you so much for being here and supporting the stream, supporting the channel. Really mean, really means a lot. BK1048, making the fold. And uh, we get to not lose with ace-queen offsuit on uh, this final table bubble. Let's get back to the real final table, though. Gotta love those colors. This is a final table, guys, where we are the chip leader. How many in your 50? Ex-nucleus making the raise. Um, 12 players left in the 50. 12 players left in that one. And that one's the big tournament of the day, guys. I mean, that's that's the big one. What do we do here? Babe89130, open limping under the gun. Um, I don't think I really feel like uh, playing along with that plan, babe. Babe89130, if you, uh, you want to see a flop, you're going to have to put in a third of your stack right here. Don't, she says. Don't. Don't. Well, I, I, I can't. I, I can't not. I can't not, babe. So, little king, queen, hold. And we hold. So, we're ahead the whole way. Uh, 270,000, there it is. How do we have so many chips, you guys? This is kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous. 
I yeah. Yeah, let me go ahead and find that video of uh, of, of of Liz or of uh, of Liv uh, talking uh, about her decision to steal. <laughs> it sounds so much worse. But uh, let, let me let me find it because she she talked about it in an interview. can't find it basically just talking about how well if you follow the show or you know anything about game theory it's the only thing to do it's the only thing to do oh, that's pretty ugly So six-handed guys, let me go ahead and take a look at this uh, payout here. Probably should start upping up that aggression. That's not what I'm saying is ugly. What I'm saying is ugly is this hand that I'm playing with T Wright 1787, where I would kind of expect him to just three bet shove from the uh, the big blind rather than make a min raise. Puts us in a weird spot. Hand for hand in the uh, weekend warm up now. <sighs> this is where we find ourselves. 31,000 in the middle. And uh, we raised pre flop. T Wright made a min raise. Actually, like, like really, really tiny raise. 6,025 more. We made it 9,000. He made it 6,025 more. So we were getting 4 to 1 putting in a pretty big chunk of our stack here <sighs> without really much of a plan except to uh, crush the flop and stack them. You know, that was the plan there. Seems like a weird plan. So 15 and a half big blinds now on the, uh, on the final table bubble, and we're a ninth out of tenth. 15 bigs. What are we supposed to do? I don't know. Seems too good to fold. Let's go ahead and make the raise here. And let's switch back over here to the uh, final table where we got Sestra making the shove and an easy fold for us. Let's see what these uh, champions do. T Wright getting out of the way. How about you, Happy Mon? Also getting out of the way. So we recover a little bit. Back up to 52,000. Back up to not the bottom of the barrel now. I think. I think that that puts us uh, in 8th place. And we have to show it. That's the problem with a show me tournament, is you actually have to show the hand. Doesn't matter though, we're, uh, we're playing our stack at this point, not so much our, uh, our hands, we're just We've got we've got so many chips that at, at this point everybody else should be playing for like second or third, and it's just kind of a disaster for you know for like turn the nuts to go out in sixth place when he's got you know second in chips or third in chips. I'll focus on this uh, this final table instead of the weekend warm up, even though the weekend warm up is. We're about to make the, the final table on the weekend warm up too, and this is the more important tournament. This is the one where it's, you know, first place is twenty four hundred and eighty two. This is, looks like a coin flip going on for a, a lot of marbles here. That's going to be, I think, T Wright had Happy Mon covered. I think this might be our uh, our final table. Yep, there it is. So we're in the final table, juggling two final tables. Um, I feel like. I feel like we've done this before. I feel like we've ju we've juggled two final tables before. Seattle Pro says you seem quite ready for that run good t-shirt. I am Seattle Pro. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. But I I can't complain with how we're running honestly. We've been running pretty good.
Final table, look at that. So, two final tables. We are at two final tables now. We've got this final table, and we've got this final table. Juggling back-to-back -back final tables. Two for two. We're not in the money yet in this weekend warm-up. Uh, which one do you guys want to see? Which one do you guys... Which is more uh, interesting? The one where they have to show their hands, and we've got the overwhelming chip lead, or the one with, uh, with some real killers at the table. Caster, Bronsonelli. Bronsonelli, I think that that's Adam V. Bronsonelli, it's great to see you. Here we are, final table. Wow, private ATM, that's a lot of chips. Yeah, here, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to fold to private ATM. I'm going to make the fold to turn the nuts here. God, it feels so, so timid. Getting uh, almost 6-1 to one to fold. I mean, why wouldn't we be playing any two cards? Well, I, against just turn the nuts, I'm making the call. But the shiz knit coming along for the ride makes me feel like uh, we, we could be in a spot where we hit our king. or hit and, and we're, we're basically looking at, at trips or two pair. And it just doesn't feel right. 8-6, look at him. Man, a nice little bluff there, man. I, I don't understand why he would make the call there with with 8-6 in that spot. So maybe we could have taken it with the king 3. Making the fold here. T-spin Jr. Making the shove over Sestra. And who do you like here? Probably T-spin Jr. Probably looking at a weakish ace. Oh, fours versus kings, yeah. Pretty good flop for T-Spin. Sester's down to uh, two outs. Doesn't get it. We're down to five. Nice hand there, T-Spin. Nice hand, T-Spin. So I think that we'll just do a normal min raise now. I think that we don't have to do the uh, the trailing digits at this point. Ah, turn the nuts. Giving us two to one to make the call with a weak ass ace. I'll make the fold. Nice hand. Yeah, king nine. Yep, yeah, nice hand there. Turn the nuts. Oh, you can see it. Yeah. It's kind of nice. It is. Try it again. And you know, I just feel like, you know, for the, for the Shiznit to to make that kind of huge shove, it feels like a mistake to me. It feels like that's a spew.
Pretty good flop, I guess, for queen two. Let's make the check. Get ready for a check raise. It's hard to make a pair. It's hard to make a pair. Okay, we can do that. One more money. <laughs> the one with more money. Let's do the one with more money. Let's do it. Uh, and you guys want to see what, what we're playing for here in the 50? Let me get that up. There it is, $2,482. Eighth place pays something like $360. The problem with making that kind of raise is it's not strong enough to really be able to uh, to uh, hold up against a 3-bet. And with these stack sizes and private ATM and t Wright 1787 having uh, having the perfect opportunity to make the 3-bet, uh, the it just feels like we're asking for it. It feels like we're asking for it. Ace is up 316. Good to see you. How are we running tonight? He says, pretty good. Pretty good. We are uh, chopping, two, uh, chopping two tables. Juggling two final tables, which is always fun. This one's happening over here. Two final tables. This one's in the money, and we're doing great. This one is uh, on the Stone Cold Bubble, and anything can happen. Sergeant Pepper looking down at a 33,000 stack and saying, okay, I'm going to make the shove here. I don't really blame you. Eight big blinds. It feels like, I mean, it's, it's sketchy. It's a sketchy one. If you get called, you're probably just crushed. We don't do it a lot, guys. We don't do it a lot, but we're going to uh, slow play. We're going to slow play a hand up here. We've got kings right here. 
And we've got an aggressive opponent who's going to uh, drive pretty hard. Here it comes. Here it comes with the ace jack. 24,000. And we will uh, represent a float. Flatty, is that right? I think some of those guys are dead. I think some of those guys are <laughs> dead, Flatty. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, we are in the money here. BK ten forty eight with the Ace King suited just uh, exited stage left, so that's gonna that's gonna do it for him. And we're in the money, so it feels pretty good. Hmm, 11 bigs and Sergeant Pepper making the min raise. We've got King 9 off. I'm going to fold. It's close. Is that right? Yes. What did you decide? Yeah, I answer you. You're in the bunny in both of them? Or just the one? We're in the money in both of them. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for that congratulations. Oh, Private ATM sure. looks like he's agree. probably going to uh, be taking out Caster in this hand. Caster's going to need some help. He's going to need like a king or a queen or an eight or a jack. or Yeah, that'll, that'll help, Caster. Caster ends up uh, chopping that pot. And I don't really like to see that. The difference between $80, every single person uh, getting knocked out at this point. I don't really see that it helps our uh, our overall chances of winning this. Uh, Caster's still here. A little 6-4 offsuit with 10 big blinds. Le a little less than 10 big blinds. We're going to be at 7.5 uh, big blinds in 14 seconds. So Let's do a little clock management here, I guess, and just give it the, uh, give it the few seconds. Still going. I think there's three more. Oh, the other final tail? Yeah. 
Oh, the uh, the Aussie Millions final table? Maybe that's what Trichotomy is talking about. Maybe he's not talking about this $5 tournament. Maybe he's talking about the Aussie Millions. <laughs> that's that's possible. Why that's that? possible. Seattle Pro, yeah, the stream the stream did crash. Hey guys, seven bigs, seven out of eight. Gonna pick our spot, make the show. I think that we can probably fade a big blind and a small blind here and still uh, still have some fold equity. Um, I think. I mean, no one wants to lose 25,000, 26,000. It's not really looking that great here, though, to tell you the truth. It's looking so much better in the $5 tournament, the one where it's $355 up top rather than the 2400 one. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We're two for two today. It's going to be a good day. And uh, we're running good, getting ready to uh, play the biggest tournament of, uh, of the year so far, the $500 tournament tomorrow. I think this is the, uh, this is the shove. Seven bigs with ace three off. If we get called, we're screwed. But we've got enough. Uh, we've got en enough chips here that we don't get called with nothing. And I don't think that we're ha we have any fold equity against Caster. That's kind of ugly. Look at this one. So we turned the ace. Is it good? I don't know. I don't know. For whatever reason, I decided not to uh, see bet into X nucleus. I don't know why. Just didn't feel right. So Adam V, let me take a look at this hand. Uh, you had 76,000, you raised the minimum, BK1048 made the shove and you had pocket tens and you made the call asking for uh, what I think about it. Well, what I think about it, uh, Adam, is, is it was fine. This is the hand that we're talking about and I think that you, you played it great. You played it great. Um, let's see, you, you know, you've got 76,000 to start the hand with, so it doesn't even really matter what you have, you probably should be making the raise here. Uh, you don't have to be near as strong as you are, given that you know we're on the stone cold bubble, and given that no one can really hurt you that bad. Eighty four thousand. So even if you, uh, worst case scenario, double up BK ten forty eight, you're still going to cruise into the money. Your expected value doesn't change that much. 
losing fifty thousand. It, it's going to change, you know, pretty drastically actually. But it's it's not going to change as much as BK ten forty eight's expected value drops, you know. And it's uh, I would say yeah, I think this is this is a fine raise. I think folding pocket tens here would be a huge mistake. When you make the minimum raise and you you know you're kind of inducing Uyghur to shove. Uh, what are the chances that BK1048 has aces or kings or queens or jacks? I would say uh, less likely than he, that he has... Um, oh, wow, look at this hand. Well, you guys can't look. I would say less likely that he has a smaller pocket pair. I think you're dominating him more often than you're not. Wow, I think that we just lost two people in the uh, in the 5k. Let me let me get this uh, hand history off. Yeah, he just he just uh, did a, a, a twofer. We're uh, we're in uh, six six handed now in this thing. And I folded what would have been the best hand with pocket sixes after it went raise, shove, reshove. I was in the big blind. I folded. Sergeant Pepper made the call with tens, and the sixes would have ended up making a straight. But uh, doesn't really matter because. We would have had to uh, take sixes against tens, ace seven, and ace jack. Tough call by Sergeant Pepper making the right move. Nice hand, nice hand, Sergeant Pepper. This is why you know proving once and you know over and over and over that you're one of the best on the site. Ah, uh, yeah, seven bigs, queen nine. It's gonna be a shove. Here it comes, right here. Hopefully we get through, and if not, let's go for a double up. We ended up getting through. We end up getting through. What time is the tournament tomorrow? Guam really wants to know. Three o'clock. Tell him. Guam boy. Three p.m. Is the five o'clock? Did the five hundred? Oh, we have this hand going now. Ah, oh, ex nucleus. Now we're in pretty bad shape. Could have gone the other way easily. Could have gone the other way. He could have had the uh, eights over the tens. He doesn't have to have. Uh, a huge hand there to shove for six big blinds. That just kind of sh that kind of sucks. And you know what I talk about when I talk about don't attack the drowning stack. Um, and when you when you lose a big pot like that, you kind of have to you know slow down a little bit. GG, what are you talking about, dude? So, GG, GG, what are you talking about? You just doubled up. Why are you saying GG? Yankee spanked. Yankee spanked. Just subscribed. Pretty sure that's uh, that's our buddy, right? That's uh, that's Steve. Good to see you, man. Hope that things are going well for you. And turn the nuts. I would be making the call here. Yeah, it's a call. Is it? Well, maybe not. Maybe I can fold this. Ace two versus king two. Wow. So one of the few hands that actually dominate us is what he was showing up at the party with. Yankee Spank, thanks so much for the sub, man. It really means a lot. It really means a lot to me. Um, you get a couple of sub perks. You get the the download version of my book, Poker Tilt, and you get a, a couple of fist bump patches. I'm actually, I, I think we were planning on uh, having dinner here not too uh, not too far into the future. I'll uh, I'll I'll bring a, an actual physical copy for you, my friend. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It always makes me feel a little bit better about making that fold when he has to show his hand. I would think he'd raise, right? No. And let's not let's not give turn the nuts an opportunity to three bet it. Let's just go ahead and put it in. Like we've got the same hand over here, making the shove, hoping to get through. 
if we don't, I hope that they get they uh, call us with nines or uh, ace jack and not uh, ace queen, not kings or queens. Fighting now we're at eleven big blinds here. A little ace jack offsuit action. That looks like uh, that looks like a pretty good hand six handed. Um, going going to assume that some of these guys are going to be opening light, and uh, by light I mean weaker aces. Ace-10, Ace-9, Ace-8, all the way down. Uh, I, I think that private ATM is raising here with uh, smaller aces way more often than he has a bigger ace. And uh, any two court cards, uh, any smaller pocket pair. What I'm basically saying is we are dominating. We are dominating uh, private ATM's range here. So it's going to be a shove, and we're going to be just happy as punch to go ahead and get it in pre-flop. What do you think, private ATM? Yep, ace 10 versus ace uh, ace jack. We gotta dodge that fucking 10. God damn it. 120,000 going the wrong way. That was a pretty critical pot. Three and a half to one favorite going out sixth place instead of uh, uh, bumping up to. Uh, well, that would have put us third in chips right behind Sergeant Pepper and Brian Boy, but instead we're out. Good game. That sucked. You still the other one? Yeah, but I mean, the the, the warm up was a lot more important. What do, what do we end up with the warm up here? Six five. Sixth place was five twenty. That's not so bad. It's all right. It's a good result, right? It just hurts. It hurts anytime you get your money in that good, and then just get uh, punished for it. That hurts. Anyway, we just uh, we just eliminated uh, another player at this table. And we are a chip leader, but everyone's uh, everyone has about the same amount of chips. So, ex parrot, man, thank you so much. I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> it was good timing, buddy. <laughs> I didn't mean to get all upset there. Let's go ahead and make the raise here with Jack Two suited. Uh, definitely takes the sting out of that bad beat when uh, when when that sub notification comes up, and I remember what we're doing here. Why we are streaming these tournaments, it's not so much for the tournaments themselves. It is very much uh, very much for the stream. Let's fire out. Half pot size bet into X Nucleus and T Spin Jr. It's going to be hard for them to continue without a queen, right? And I think T Spin Jr. is probably dunk leading with a queen. Probably even an eight. I think it's going to be a fold. So we get through with the jack high. Up that... Uh, up that chip lead just a little bit. <sighs> and we got X Nucleus making the raise. I'll fold 8 5 suited to you, X Nucleus. Interesting amount. Interesting sizing there, X Nucleus. Too much, actually. I'm going to go ahead and see. So we made it 33,750. I'm actually going to fold to UX Nucleus on the uh, small blind here with a king three off. Maybe a little bit nitty. Maybe. Yeah, so that's a three quarter, I guess, is what what X Nucleus decided to do. Uh, hit that three fourths pot button. Well. And T-Spin Jr., I will go ahead and C-bet the same amount. It's interesting having them show every hand that they win and also knowing that they're seeing every hand that we're making the bet. It's, it's interesting. So here he comes, X-Nucleus, with a uh, three-quarter size bet again. This time I think we're going to actually see a flop with him. So a 447 on that flop, X Nucleus. Got to think that you're probably going to go ahead and fire out a C bet, right? And your plan when you're making these kind of bets is not to just give up, I got to think. Uh, it's too dry. Too dry. So he had A6. Maybe we could have gotten through him.
T-Spin Jr. making the shove with sevens, getting through X-Nucleus. That's actually good for us. Um, we kind of want to keep both of these players in and then just kind of uh, gradually push them down. That's the, uh, that's the plan. So this is, this is interesting. X-Nucleus now making it a different amount. You guys realize that? He's making it uh, almost four times the pot now with the Ace-3. Make the fold here with a queen nine. Yeah, X nucleus making the shove, and I think uh, I don't know what I do if I'm T spin junior. It does feel like X nucleus is kind of just going uh, going a little bit batshit here. There it is, T spin junior getting knocked out. Next nucleus getting uh, getting those chips, and we are heads up. Heads up for the win, you guys. This could be it. This could be our second win of 2016. Um, we have a, a little bit of an uphill battle here. It looks like X Nucleus making the uh, 2.5x raise. And you know what, X Nucleus? I'm thinking that, that probably means that our King Six suited is the best hand. So let's make the shove. Jack, Jack, five. He's expecting the C bet, right? Yeah. And that's our. That's pretty good. So we don't need a C bet on the flop. Now we are. Now we can C bet right here. Pocket nine's pretty good. What do you think, X nucleus? So X nucleus making the uh, 2.5 X raise, and yeah, let's just max it again. I think sometimes we get called with worse. Yeah, there we are. Nines versus sevens. Hold, and we've got the we've got the uh, the win. Hold. That's gonna do it, guys. Second W, second W of the year. Nice. That's a win won the show me tournament that was a pretty fun event you guys seeing every single hand as it's played out um, 350 it was not that much it was not that much but you know what it's been a good day you guys it's been a good day and anytime you win a tournament it's good let me, let me go ahead and um, let me make sure that we've got the uh, that's what that's what we just won so it's the 335 dollars there up top first place in a five dollar tournament, it's a pretty good ROI. Pretty good ROI. And we did not win the uh, the, the fifty dollar weekend warm up. We got sixth out of eight, but all together, pretty good stream, you guys. I feel pretty good about how today went. I hope that uh, I hope that we can continue the run good for tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the stream down. I want to say thank you all to uh, you know for, for being here. Thank you guys so much for for being part of the stream and being. Uh, did you, did you put payouts, the new payouts? I did. Yeah. Make sure to click on that follow button if you're not following yet. Click on that little heart here on Twitch. And if you're watching this uh, sometime YouTube. in the future on YouTube, come over to Twitch sometime. Twitch.tv forward slash Dutch Boy for some hi. live uh, poker action. I think that we're going to go ahead and throw a host somewhere. Let me see who but all is we playing. Might, wait, wait, wait. I was going to try to talk you into playing some video games with me maybe. So. Really? Maybe. So maybe we can play. I don't know. We I know you want... That. I know we, you we want to play. That. Well, that regardless, game. we're shutting the stream down. Just you know, even if we do stream something, we're going to be putting it on no delay anyway. Yeah, we're going to be no delay. I do kind of want to play some Rust. I might set up the green screen and, and get that going. But uh, I'm shutting the stream down oh, anyway. Oh, no but it's what. going to be very. If we do play that game, though, it's going to be very, very violent. So we have to get a viewer discretion is advised. Viewer discretion strongly advised. There yeah. will be schlongs. There would be penises everywhere. Um, there will yeah, be schlongs. Yeah, but you can, you can, you can like 
fuzzy out the penises. I hey, think so. But that's sexist if you fuzzy it. It's out. it's sexist, right? So, uh, it's sexist. But, or you can play Don't <laughs> Don't Starve. That's a fun game. I, don't I, Starve is so much fun. Yeah, we can play Don't Starve. Maybe don't I'll Starve talk. is a very See, I gotta sweet game. I gotta negotiate the games with you right now. Yeah, we might, or so. we might not. We might not do any of it. We no, might just no, no, stream we'll, we'll together see, we'll see. on our own. We'll we'll see. But guys, thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to click on that little uh, but heart for, button we underneath the stream. Follow the stream. We were trying to get up to twelve thousand followers. We're almost there. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Dutch Boy for me at first for x that's at 1st and if you're watching on YouTube make sure to click on that, that subscribe button and uh, please be kind yeah. in the comments I do read them and some of them hurt my feelings so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's always yeah. nice winning though you don't have to second guess a win you know you never that's the best thing about actually taking a tournament down is you never have to go back and think about what you could have done differently there's no second guessing a win. So do you think, well, before we go, do you think that you played better because it was a show me tournament? Do you think uh, it was better? Yes. It was a better I for do. you? And being do you feel able like to with having that a information? Game, yeah, absolutely. that information, you felt like it, you played better. I feel like it was helpful. I feel like so we do were you able hope- to better correlate pre-flop size amounts with uh, with action. I feel like there was a higher skill level in this in this show me event. And do I feel you, like the, the do you idea feel like they should implement poker is a big do you think they should implement this in the next WSOP World Series I would Series love poker? for them to actually go a step further. That'd be awesome, right? And, and do the, the, the full exposed poker. I should talk to Jack about that. See if maybe we can't uh, try some things. Or maybe Chris over at But isn't this show me? I mean, the show me format is what I'm referring to. I'm talking about exposed poker. I'm talking about the show me The show format. me format takes it one step. But I would like the whole way. Well, the good. more the more poker information, the more information you have at the table, the more it, it is a skill game. Okay, uh, you know it, that's just the way it is. So, guys, thanks again so much, and join us tomorrow for the biggest tournament of our year so far. The five hundred dollar yeah, uh, that's gonna be fun. Are you gonna wake deal. up on time, or are we are we killing things at, in rust? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> See, that's if, the if we sleep too game. long, then maybe we won't. Maybe we don't play it. Is there a late? Is there a? Um, there will be a late reg, but it's not a rebuy in an add-on tournament, so there's really no point in late regging. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, How long I, are the levels? Pretty sure we're going to be playing it, but we might not. We might. If if, if I don't feel like uh, I'm, I'm up to the challenge, we'll play some. We'll play something a little bit less hurtful when things don't go well. Guys, <laughs> thanks so much. You guys are awesome. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you soon. Woohoo!